When I'm asked, did I ask me uh, if I could imagine to do something about the 1980s? Of course, I was immediately very excited about it. And I was also, of course, excited because Max and I have together a great story in the 80s. And uh, we kind of together discovered this new art and this new phenomena, uh, which I think, uh, as we see it from, from our perspective now, really important for a big change in the way to do art. There were a lot of other changes going on and we were happy to be in the middle of it. The structure and the idea how to develop the show came easily with three parts that the two different venues and to have two shows in September and one show in November. Uh, already laid out a certain structure that made sense for me because I wanted to look at it from the three different points of view. Um, at Goethestrasse in September, you see a show mainly about painting. The painting issue in the very early 80s was super important to kind of break with all what was the rule. Uh, these young painters, they kind of uh, uh, worked against a certain dogma which was created by minimalism and concept art. They were painters uh, who of course knew and well understood what the generations before had done, but uh, they also saw the need for liberation. And the funny thing was that um, it was especially this kind of painting uh, this kind of very intense painting that created an openness. This way of painting uh, was a way to kind of s create a certain freedom uh, to be able to do whatever was necessary to do art. Uh, a generation before, which was very inf influential, uh, minimal art, concept art, uh, these artists uh, created strict rules and everybody saw also, in, not at that end, but a certain development which was difficult to continue. And, uh, and so there were many different ways to uh, try to open this up. And for me, the very important one was how these painters would act. And they would act in a very intelligent way and um, to use um, to make a first use of this new kind of rich imagery, which um, also with the 80s were coming along. Uh, it was an anticipation also of the image society we have now. And uh, these painters understood this very early. Similar to their colleagues in America, of course also painters like Julian Schnabel or others, but also to the uh, Image, new image artists like Cindy Sherman uh, and or Barbara Kruger in America. So it was also the need uh, and the urgency to deal with the upcoming flood of images. In these days, it was of course advertisement. This was the media, that ever progressing media. Uh, it was by far not as far as we are today with uh, the electronic media, but. I think very strongly that most of these artists really anticipated some developments. And, um, and this, in the end, the third part of the show will uh, show some of these anticipations, will show how artists entered media in very different ways and how artists would uh, transform into different materialities. And in between, maybe, we can see at the show at the Kurfürstendamm, it's also about material qualities. It's about uh, how painting could transfer into sculpture, how these things move into each other. And that's one very important thing, I think, with this period of the 80s, that uh, things, as I said before, were not set anymore after strict rules. It was an open movement, and an open movement new forms of open movement were created. And today, 
it's very normal and very usual for younger artists to move in these different kinds of spaces. In these days, it was something very, very new. New materials, new spaces, new strategies, and um, the diversity of all these strategies and of all these methods, that was very impressive. And so we had this incredible uh, move of creativity and freedom, which um, was between in this case, with our two galleries between Cologne and Vienna. And, uh, and this, I think, brings me to another point. Um, there was a geographic and historic dimension to it. Uh, if you may remember, uh, in 1989, there was the fall of the Iron Curtain. And this, of course, was a moment of big historical importance. And I think, at least for what we were doing in Vienna in these days, uh, in the 80s, there was a certain anticipation. Uh, before Vienna was the city on the, uh, on the corner of the free world, near the Iron Curtain. And suddenly in the 80s, Vienna became hot. And of course, uh, what happened at the end of the 80s here in Berlin, what happened in several Eastern European capitals, in Vienna in some ways it was anticipated. And that was also a certain great interest by first the German artists and then the American artists to look at this city, which was between the 19th century and the 21st century. And um, uh, that was, there was another way of excitement. And it was also, when we started in the 80s, the art world was more or less the west of Germany or the west of Europe and the east of the United States. And suddenly during the 80s, we would look further west and suddenly California, which before was very, very exotic, would become a part of our discourse and people like Mike Kelly or Liz Lana would become important. And then I started from Vienna to look more to the east. And so we have Miroslav Barker in the show representing an openness which, of course, in Eastern Europe also in some ways happened in the 80s, but only became uh, better known in the 90s. And so this period was a period of transformation, as we know through history. And suddenly new geographies turned up. And it was the beginning of something which nowadays we understand as, as, glob as a global situation. And uh, uh, nowadays, it's completely normal, it's usual that we look at China, that we look at South America. In these days, um, it, was, uh, it was still something completely new, even to go over the Iron Curtain and to look at art in Eastern Europe. And all these dynamics, I think, are super interesting, and they focus around the 1980s. And so we have a big change from an art which was following a certain path of art history from the 18th century up until the uh, end of the 20th century, a development towards abstraction, a development kind of uh, set up a big rule, uh, set of rules in art and to create a, like an, uh, an idea of art history and suddenly this idea was broken. It was first by the painters, but then also by very different artists and different strategies. And we had this incredibly open field, an open field that we are still working on nowadays. I'm very happy that Max chose to put Verwoben on the poster of the show. And of course, Verwoben is a piece that uh, came into existence very late in the 80s, but it may be also very symptomatic for Verwoben. Uh, it's the word which exists in German, but it does not exist as a noun, it exists as a verb. And Verwoben is um, saying what I was saying before, these different methods and the different ways to approach things uh, uh, are woven within each other in all of the works of the 80s. And Liz takes it really physical and literal. And she created these three cubes. Um, uh, she sees them also as a figure. She calls them head, torso, and feet. And she uses very different materials. And with this uh, 
kind of very different forms of textile structures. And if you look more precisely, some of only material quality, but some of them, there's, for example, this one side of the piece, which is called head, where you have heads from newspapers, which are in the weaving of the, uh, of the cube. Uh, you have very different qualities of textile qualities, color qualities, material qualities, and all are put into it. And the whole thing is also a big weave, a big net in a space and so I'm very happy about the space at Kurfürstendamm which is now I think is the fourth or fifth time the piece has been installed and every time it's really different. It has been done for my gallery at Balgasse and I remember that Max was immediately impressed by then and so it's a piece that accompanies us a lot, a lot of times. It was shown for example in a very important show on sculpture at the Whitney Museum in New York. It, I did show, I show it at the retrospective of Lislana at the Kunsthalle Basel. And so it had very different um, locations and each time um, it's, it's becoming very new to me again. And that's a very exciting piece. And we have to imagine that's now like nearly 30 years ago that it came into existence. Classical media in our eyes now, which in these days were still very hot, new magazines, uh, uh, publishing, different forms of publishing, also reflected by the artists. So an important part of the show at Goethe-Strasse now and also in November are to show the catalogs. The artists have became very active to produce the cat catalogs, to produce their own visuality. Uh, um, some artists were very much invested into posters, especially Martin Kippenberger, but also Franz West. They would do incredible posters and create incredible new worlds of images within the field of the poster. For Günther Förg, uh, the wall paintings, Wandmalerei, were in very important parts of his work. And he was, of course, this artist who would act on many different levels. By Kurfürstendamm, we have a reconstruction uh, of a show that I did in Vienna in the late 80s. Uh, when I was discussing with Günther to make a group show of painters that he and I liked, and, um, and he would create for this space in Vienna at Ungergasse this uh, wall painting, and um, then uh, we would put together these uh, paintings. We found some of the paintings are very similar paintings, and together with the mirror and the bronze relief, also of the same kind as uh, um, Günther showed it there, it's nearly a reconstruction of the show. Also, we are now having at Goethe-Strasse uh, the situation of the first show that um, Albert and Markus Oehlen, Kippenberger and Büttner did in Vienna, uh, Schwerter zu Zapfenern. So the painting at the entrance of the show uh, by Büttner, by Oehlen and by Kippenberger all have been also in this show in Vienna. So that's an amazing situation that we were lucky to really to get some of the works that have been seen in some of the galleries and um, which also document our close cooperation between Max and me.